Namane Padis Piri, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. So, our saint for today, Saint Lawrence, um, one of the um, uh, earlier martyrs, and uh, one of the more important is, is that they're not, you would say, all the same, but um, Saint Lawrence was recognized as being uh, instrumental in the conversion of Rome. Uh, this would be by Saint Augustine and others, as we will see. But he was born in Spain around the year 225, and uh, there he was taught by a renowned teacher who would eventually become Pope Sixtus II. So um, the, this, this teacher-student pair, details are scarce, but eventually they traveled to Rome, and in the year 257, indeed, uh, Lawrence's teacher was elected Pope, choosing the name Sixtus II. Uh, so knowing, of course, very well the uh, um, uh, character and virtues of his student, uh, Pope Sixtus uh, nominated, um, or rather ordained, Lawrence a deacon and named him Archdeacon of Rome. Uh, this was a position of great uh, trust and importance because he was, his job was to guard the treasury of the church and to disperse its wealth among the poor persons, alms to the poor. Well, just one year later, after being elected uh, uh, to the papacy and, and nominated to, to the diaconate uh, for Lawrence, the Emperor Valerian issued an edict that all bishops, priests, and deacons should immediately be put to death. Uh, so Pope Sixtus was arrested on August 6th in the year 258, and that's the Feast of the Transfiguration. And he, along with seven deacons, uh, they were all arrested while celebrating Mass. Uh, and they were immediately taken from Mass and led to their place of execution. No trial, no nothing, just immediate. Uh, St. Lawrence, however, was spared because the Romans wanted to interrogate him as to where uh, the whereabouts of the treasures of the church. So he was set aside uh, for later. Uh, but the, um, the love of God was evident in our holy deacon, for he <laughs> followed uh, St. Sixtus on his way to martyrdom, weeping, and said to him, Father, where are you going without your son? Wherein have I displeased you? Uh, the Holy Pope, at the sight of the grief of St. Lawrence, was moved to compassion and answered him, I do not, I do not leave you, my son, uh, but a greater trial and a more glorious victory are reserved for you who are in the vigor of youth. You shall follow me in three days. Uh, St. Sixtus charged St. Lawrence to distribute among the poor the treasures of the church committed to his care before they could be seized by the impious Roman governor. And the funds of the church at that time were considerable, uh, for in addition to having all of the necessary provisions for uh, the ministers and for mass, uh, the church maintained 1,500 poor persons, many widows and virgins, and often sent large alms into distant countries. Uh, so uh, Sixtus and his companions were martyred, and uh, the, the um, commemoration of St. Sixtus was uh, an octave ago. Eight days ago, I think it was uh, August 3rd. Uh, the prefect of Rome commanded Lawrence to be brought before him and said, I am told that according to your doctrine, you must render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. Well, since your God brought no money with him into the world, but only words, give us your money and be rich in words. Thus the, the impious uh, words of the, of the governor. Uh, St. Lawrence pa uh, pa peacefully replied, the church indeed is rich, nor has the emperor any treasure equal to what it possesses. I will show you its greatest treasures, but allow me a little time to set everything in order. The prefect granted him three days, during which time Lawrence uh, went, to, went, to, uh, went to work. Uh, he took all the treasure of the, of the church and uh, sold or distributed them among the poor, and he gathered the blind, the lame, the orphans, the widows, um, and charged them to appear in three days before the church. So at the appointed time, St. Lawrence uh, went to the prefect and invited him to come and see the treasures of the church. Upon arrival, the prefect was astonished to see so many poor wretches gathered there. St. Lawrence said, At what are you displeased? 
The gold which you so eagerly desire is a vile metal and serves to incite men to all manner of crimes. The light of heaven is the true gold which these poor persons enjoy. Their bodily weaknesses and sufferings serve to increase the, their patience and is of the highest advantage. Vice and passion are the real diseases of this world. Behold, in these poor are the church's crown. Make use of them for the advantage of Rome, of the emperor, and of yourself. Thus St. Lawrence exhorted the prefect to redeem himself uh, uh, by sincere repentance and alm deeds by embracing the faith. Uh, the prefect, however, was beside himself with rage and cried out in fury, Do you thus mock me? Is it thus that Roman power is insulted? I know that you desire to die. This is your vanity. But you shall not die immediately, as you imagine. I will prolong your torture, that your death may be the more bitter, as it shall be slower. You shall die by inches. The prefect then had St. Lawrence seized, and a great gridiron prepared, under which hot coals, almost extinguished, were placed, that the martyr might be slowly roasted alive. Lawrence was bound with chains upon this gridiron, and the smoldering coals beneath broiled his fr flesh little by little. Uh, both pagan and Christian witnesses were present at this event. Uh, however, yeah, each group saw something uh, different. To the cr Christians gathered there, uh, you know, um, uh, weeping over the death of uh, St. Lawrence, his face appeared to be surrounded with an extraordinary light. And from his broiled body, rather than the awful smell of burnt flesh, there came a most agreeable odor. The pagan unbelievers, however, perceived neither the light nor the smell. However, both groups witnessed the amazing constancy and perfect peace of soul of St. Lawrence in the midst of this awful torture. His face remained calm and serene, as if he was not being tortured at all. St. Augustine, on writing the account of his life, says that the martyr felt not the torments of the persecutors, so vehement was his desire of possessing Christ. St. Ambrose writes that while his body broiled in the material flames, the flames of divine love, far more active within his breast, made him heedless of the pain. Such was the tranquility of St. Lawrence amidst his torments, that having suffered for a long time, uh, he showed uh, both uh, his courage, his generosity, and also, you would say, uh, something of the humor of God, uh, just the absolute invincibility of the faith. Uh, for he turns to the judge and says to him with a cheerful countenance, turn me over, for I am done on this side. Uh, that, that famous quote of St. Lawrence. Uh, just absolutely, um, in the most charitable way possible, mocking his tormentors. You seek to get me to, uh, um, uh, to uh, give up the faith, to apostatize by these incredible torments. These torments are nothing to me uh, uh, compared to the love of Christ. Uh, and, and so many martyrs have, have done thus. Uh, and in so doing, with this sentence, um, uh, St. Lawrence made himself not only the patron saint of cooks and chefs, but also of comedians. Uh, so the prefect and others insulted him during his agony, but the martyr continued in earnest prayer for the conversion of the city of Rome and all the inhabitants therein. And finally, lifting up his eyes towards heaven, uh, he expired and gave his soul to God. Now, this is, this is what in, in, in the gospel for today, the gospel reading is, unless a grain of wheat fall to the ground and die, it remains alone. But if it falls in it, it will bring forth fruit, right, and be very fruitful. And this is, uh, this is, that is understood of the martyrs, in that of themselves, had they remained living, uh, it would have been just them, uh, or, or whatever it may be. But in so dying, especially the, the more, the, the greater the torments, the more the crowd is gathered, uh, the more conversions there are. And Lawrence offered his death for the conversion of Rome, and, and that was powerful. Several senators who were present at his death, senators, high-ranking officials, were so moved by this spectacle that they became Christians on the spot. Prudentius, a late Roman poet, says that the death of St. Lawrence was the death of idolatry in Rome, from which time began sensibly uh, that idolatry began to decline. Uh, St. Augustine asserts that through the intercession of St. Lawrence, God wrought in Rome an incredible number of miracles. 
So what enabled St. Lawrence to give, this, uh, to give this witness and to give this example was the, 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 the peace of soul that comes from a generous and courageous surrender to the will of God. Whatever God wants of us, uh, we are ready and willing to give it. That doesn't mean that what, what God asks isn't going to be painful or difficult or even confusing, but if we love God, uh, when he makes his will known to us, we will follow it with generosity. And how do we know the will of God? I have said this so many times. Whatever happens to us outside of our control. So many people, uh, um, I, I hear this, they confess, I lack trust in God. What they lack trust in is that they, la they don't think God's going to give them what they want. And you're right, you are correct not to trust God, if that's what you're expecting. He's not going to give you what you want. He's going to give you what you need. He's not going to give you what will make you comfortable, but he's going to give you what will make you holy. Uh, now, in the Butler's Lives, the entry for Butler's Lives of the Saints, uh, I'll finish. This is just an excellent uh, um, uh, um, uh, conclusion. Uh, it reads thus. If we are dejected or impatient under our troubles, indulging in murmuring and complaints, or call ourselves unhappy and suffering, it is evident that self-love reigns in our hearts and that we seek our own inclinations more than the will of God. The state of suffering is the true test of our love, by which we may judge whether in agreeable times we love the will of God or our own will. If we detect self-love in our sufferings, all the rest of our lives is to be suspected of the same disorder. Nor can we easily give any other evidence that faith and divine love are the principle of our actions. St. Lawrence shows that grace sweetens what is bitter to the flesh. A lively faith, like that of the martyrs, would make us me measure the goods and evils of this life by the light of faith only. And did we sincerely love God, we would embrace his holy will with joy in all things, and have no other desire, and find no happiness but in it. Uh, thus Butler's Lives of the Saints, and so let us make this our goal and our prayer. Uh, that we may accept the will of God, especially in sufferings, and learn to find our happiness there. And if we can do that, all the rest of our lives will be happy no matter what happens. Uh, that is a great prayer and a great grace indeed. Uh, St. Lawrence, pray for us. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you for listening. Please remember to click subscribe and to hit the bell for notifications. And in this age of censorship, please consider helping support us at sensefidelium.com. Under the Donate and Support tab, there are plenty of ways to help support the work and to help grow and sustain the efforts of Census Fidelium in general. May God reward you, and thank you very much.